Mm. Eat local pizza. Mm. Eat local pizza. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna mm. eat this all now. Sausage pizza. <laughs> yes. This is great. What? This doesn't go back in the beat box. 807-767-000. Eat local pizza. This is the Michael Lated Show, episode 70. Yes, this is happening tonight. We got the one and only. Yes, she's here with me. I'm so excited. We have Ashley Gibbons. Please, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Do you dance? Yeah, I do. Dancing is good, right? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. It moves energy. You can just, you know, it does the body good. It, it, it really does. It does. I know. It's yeah. it's deep stuff. Like dancing is like, whew, feel good. All kinds of good stuff. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, exercise, it's spiritual. It's, you know, when you're happy, you want to dance. And it's just, it brings people together. It's music. Mm. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> we have a we have a one year old now, and a six year old, and you know sometimes we have music on in the living room, and everybody's like, doo, 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 doo. and the one year old he he hangs on to the fridge where the freezer drawer is, <laughs> and then he's just like, chicka, 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 chicka. <laughs> <laughs> we'll dance for tater tots. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then the new move he has, the new move is like he he swings out the leg like this. Oh. And then he he watches us if we look, and we we like yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. Dance, baby, dance. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, how are you doing today, Ashley? I'm I'm doing really good. I'm having a really good week. Mm. Um, am I loud enough? I usually don't speak very loudly, so. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm I'm having such a great week that. It's a uh, like excellent time to to be doing this. So, oh, thank oh, you. Oh. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a, it's an honor. I really <laughs> appreciate you being here tonight and you know, I admire what you do and craft with everything you do. There's there's oh, I don't want to just say one thing now because you do a lot. And like look at that sweater you got on, right? I know where the, you Yes, I finished it. You, you made that. <laughs> I finished it just for this. <laughs> I did. It's amazing. I, I, wow. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I make my own clothes. How how neat is that, you know? And yes. to make the fabric and to make the fabric and the pieces together and to think that it just starts off as, you know, a little ball of yarn and mm. it just it just grows. It's it's so neat. It's such a neat process. There's so much energy in it too, right? Because it's just yeah. like you put so much into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there are lots of hours, lots of thought, lots of swearing. <laughs> what? I thought we did. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I actually just bought a mask from another maker mm. who gets her fabric from um a fabric designer in uh, British Columbia this week. And the masks are, I crochet, therefore I swear. Yes. And the other one is I crochet so I don't kill people. So of course <laughs> <laughs> I saw those and I was like, I need those. <laughs> those are good. Yeah. Is it it's like a disclaimer, right? Yeah. Is it on the side or just like right by the, the whole thing? Oh, wow. It's like multiple little mm. It's cute. I've seen a I've seen a mask where it's it's like painted on that you the nose is still there and then you have a mouth and that you wear it under the chin, so it looks Whoa. it looks like you don't wear a mask. Like you don't have one. Yeah, yeah that's Weird. that's not nice. No, it's wrong impression. Mm -hmm. Cro crochet is yeah. way cooler. I think so. Yeah, it's like magic sticks and just you know mm. how do you I think it's kind of cool it is it is very traditional you know this is very um independent you have a lot of knowledge about hey i'm making a sleeve this has to be round how do i do this <laughs> yeah there's a lot of math involved ah. lots of math really yeah there's such a term as crochet math and knitting math 
Mm. And uh, I actually, in November, I believe it was November, all well, the days are a blur now, but uh, I took a course uh, through Vogue Knitting. Yes. Uh, and it was called Knitting uh, Math for Knitting. So, mm. and it's just a matter of, again, it's just numbers and uh, it's multiplying. It's a little bit like algebra, you know, if Ooh. try to fit or figure it all out. And yeah, it's a big picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, but is it algebra or is it not? Or is it as complex as? I like, wouldn't say it's as complex. I don't find it as complex. Um, if they would have had this type of math in high school, I probably would have had a higher grade. <laughs> But it's. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> I sucked at math. Too. I say that and I worked in finance <laughs> before. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, school, you know, is always special. Yeah. You know, some people always excel and some people do not and then they end up somewhere else. I mean, Absolutely. It, you know, it doesn't define, maybe it does some, but for me it didn't. I found it's so black and white. It doesn't teach to everybody's different styles or everybody's interests or mm. like I've never used trigonometry. I would have much preferred having you know, resume writing or budget planning or yeah. how to use a credit card in college, you know, those would have been a lot more mm -hmm. beneficial to most of the population versus trigonometry. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I hear yeah. you. Yeah. So now you, you say there's a lot of math involved and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the sweater you have. I hope that's the correct yeah. terminology. If you, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. If yeah. you, if with the sweater now, where would you, is it one, you start it as one piece or do you start with multiple sleeves first or how, is it like one point of origin? This, how does it go? Well, this one here in particular was multiple pieces. Oh, okay. You worked the front panel and then the two front panels and then you worked the back panel and then you worked the sleeves and then you had to sew everything up yeah. together. Um, there are sweaters called a yoke. So Y-O-K-E and that's where you start from the neck uh. and it's in one piece and you work from the top wow. down. Um, I made one in January, which was like the pullover, which was the front piece, the back piece, the sleeves. Mm. So there's different styles and it all depends on your skill, your interests. Some people like me, I, I personally hate hand sewing. It just, it's tedious. It's like for this sweater, it took me seven hours just to sew the sleeves on. Oh, okay. Wow. Is that just because it's you or what did, would be the timeline on that normally? Well, this one here is made with a very, very thin yarn. This is made with silk. Oh, so super soft. Super soft. There's merino, uh, oh. wool and silk. So it's very thin versus something that would be of a thicker yarn would take less time. Mm. And sometimes you could just crochet it on okay which is very quick to do but once you start taking lace and then with the lace hook and then you're trying to mm. make sure everything is all lined up and then you have different colors so you don't want it to be obvious different anyways yeah so the more detailed it is the longer it takes okay but, yeah. yeah i i think i misunderstood you i thought it took seven hours to attach the sleeve onto the main body Yeah, like just it did. like it did. Yeah. Wow. 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 Okay, I'm, I'm blown away. <laughs> Two mornings of homeschooling. One morning <laughs> of homeschooling per sleeve. That's how I figured it out. Nine to mm. from 9 a.m. to 12:45. It took one sleeve, and then the next day, the same amount of time for the other sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. How's that going? Homeschooling. You know what? <laughs> kids she's only four so she started this is her first year yeah and kids are not made to look at a computer screen mm. all day mm -hmm. you know 
for her, it's like, why am I being punished? Why am I not allowed to play with my toys? Was I bad? Mm. I'm like, no, honey, you know, we're trying to learn. And she's like, you know, and there's fits and I don't want to listen. This is boring. And yeah, we're just at the point of, you know what? Just listen to it while you play Barbies and yeah. Something will catch your attention and you'll want to do it, but mm, it's JK, hats right off there? to the teachers. Is hats off to the teachers. The teachers? It's, it's, oh my God. Yeah. Superheroes. Mm -hmm, I know. Yeah. We had, we, we did one week of Albus where he's, yeah. he's grade one now. Just when yeah. the, the, I think it was after, after Christmas, we had like okay. one extended leave and they had one week of online. Because yeah. for his mental health, we are sending him to school because he needs that engagement as much oh, as possible. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And he, mm -hmm. uh, we would listen to the teachers when he was on the laptop and we were just like, I got to learn. I got to learn this. <laughs> you know, there were some things I really took away from it. Yeah. Because the way they are to empower the kids, I did not know how good they do it. It's so good. Yeah, absolutely. They're and they're learning as they're going too. Like nobody's really teaching them how to teach. You It's know, true. they're you know they're just flying by the seat of their pants. They they have no idea what they're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing at this point. I know, but uh, yeah. At, at one point, they had twenty six kids. And this is like junior kindergarten and mm. I don't even know. I just sat there and went, like, what do you do? Mm. Like these, their patience of, I don't know. They have so much patience. Yeah. They're from another yeah. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's some pretty funny stuff though. You'll hear something and, And then you'll just sit there and you're just like, as a parent, you're just like, oh my goodness, did the kid just say that? <laughs> like, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here's some pretty funny stuff. It makes up for the other times, I guess. <laughs> It's also good to see when, you know, sometimes parents think they are the only ones when the kid screws up in our, yeah. like, in our thinking, whatever. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. he can't sit still. I don't know what he's doing. But then you look at the other screen on, and like maybe you just look a little bit over, and then you just see all the other kids are just like, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. There's some. It's like, um, honey, why do you have a knife and you're climbing the chair to go in the freezer? <laughs> like, <laughs> the kids like, I want to show you something in my freezer, and it's like, check this out. There's a lot of sausages right there. <laughs> I was like, where is this going? <laughs> you almost were, you're tuning in to see where this is going. Like, this is going to be good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's record this right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good stuff. Okay, well, yeah. you know, we will see how this year will continue. But yeah. you, you, are, you are flexible to still work while you also take care of your family. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. It's uh, it's not something a lot of people are able and fortunate to say. And I don't take that for granted every single day. I think, you know, years ago when I started this business, I, I never thought in a million years that it would get us through a pandemic. Mm. You know, it's, Yes. To be able to be at home and be safe while there's so many people who are not in that situation who yes. are risking themselves every day for that. That is. It's true. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. It's nothing more than I can say than a gift, really. Yeah, yeah you're grateful for it. And so would Absolutely. I. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. For sure. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Now. We, we could dive into further production details right now. Yeah. But I, I kind of am interested how, you know, you learned first to get where you are today. I, I did not learn knitting with my mom uh, for various reasons. <laughs> And that's okay. I'm not making fun of this, okay? Yeah. I have huge respect no, for No, no. I didn't learn from my mom either. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, 
maybe yeah. one or two generations before myself or you, it was like traditionally, I believe it was passed on. It was. You know, we we made sure that we would know how to do it. Absolutely. I actually learned from my grandmother. Ah. Um, my grandmother um, used to live with us um, for a good portion. And uh, she actually taught me before, before we were living together, um, we, sh we had like a basement apartment. So she had the basement apartment kind of thing. So mm. she still had her, her independence, but yeah. somebody was close by. Um, but she would like babysit me. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was our way to spend the nights when we were mm -hmm. together. She would make these beautiful doilies, just freestyle, like no wow. pattern, no nothing. She would just take it and mm. just go. And I just pretty much said, I want to know how to do that. Mm. Like teach me how. And so she taught me, she would make everybody in the family got those classic Chevron blankets. I mean, oh, beautiful. Yeah. So she taught me trying to do that. But unfortunately, I was too young to understand the math behind mm. it because she didn't follow a pattern. She just mm. knew it. Yes. And I couldn't understand how it would go up and then go down and then go back up. And it just wouldn't work. It, I was young enough to be playing with Barbies. So I really wasn't old enough to understand. But. Mm. Do you know how old she you were? Told me that, so, sorry. I was probably, I want to say eight or nine years old. Okay. Yeah. And when she taught me the basics, but because I wasn't able to grasp the logic of the math behind it, it just. Yeah, for sure. I made myself some wonky Barbie blankets and nice. called it a day. Yeah. And then when I was older, um, one of my boyfriend's moms taught me how to knit dishcloths mm. and how to read knitting patterns. Mm. And then I learned how to knit from uh, knitting for dummies. Like, because this was before YouTube and the yes. internet and that was painstakingly awful. <laughs> Trying to learn that from a book. It was awful. Yes. And then when I was pregnant for my daughter, we were doing um, an Arctic theme nursery and I wanted this snowflake blanket Ooh. and I couldn't find it in knitting. So I could only find it in crochet. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to learn how to do this again. And my, I taught myself how to, read patterns, change the colors, all that for my first project. Mm. And I haven't stopped since. It's been five years. It showed up on my Facebook memories. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last week, the week before, it was like five years ago. I was like, look, my first square. And I was like, holy cow, I've been doing this for five years. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. What? So that's my, my story. That's kind of how I learned. And... Yeah. yeah. So did you, when you were that age, around eight, nine, did you like, did you appreciate what you were doing or did you feel the magic of your grandma, what she can create? Did that empower you or what did you feel? Why did it stick? Why? Well, because I felt connected to her. That was our thing. I know that my mom wasn't a crocheter. Our whole family is very artsy fartsy kind of people mm. um one way or another but uh i knew that was something special because it wasn't something that anybody else learned yes how to do and uh, why why do you think that is why do you think people like like when you were a child you were interested in it and of course through family but why 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 did it go away for some I don't know. I've growing up, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Yeah. So wow. I think maybe, yeah. You knew I that? Heard, no, I, that was my dream. My dream was to move to New York City. Yes, please. Have a fashion show. Like, I wanted to have my 
own clothing line. And mm. I was so much of an introverted kid. I remember spending hours in the basement, you know, drawing away, ah. listening to fashion file, like yes. Kate Moth posters all over my wall. Mm. And just drawing and sketching. And it was just something I always wanted to do. So maybe that's why it stuck yes. with me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't speak for others why it doesn't stick. Mm. But yeah, it, it could be intricate. You know, when something is hard and you don't get it right away, it's easy to get flustered and just be like, oh, you know, sure, I'm done with this. And it's done. And, you yeah. know, yeah, but uh I'm not sure why other people would give up on it. I know I gave up on it just because of it wasn't turning out pretty like my grandma's, you know, like that was Yeah. <laughs> why did you so you wanted to be a designer, right? Yeah. 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 And were you thinking like sometimes designers also present, right? Is that is that like against the rule, maybe? I don't know. No, honestly, um, I grew up doing beauty pageants, modeling, the dancing, the singing, the yeah. all of that, all of that jazz. And it was actually, I was in grade 10 mm-hmm. and my art teacher in high school said, get a new dream. It'll never happen. Nice. I had those kind of teachers too. Right. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you know how hard that is to make it, you know, like, you're, you know, you're so smart. You could do something else, pick a new dream. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And here they have we a are lot 20 of influence. years later. Mm. Yeah. They do have a lot of influence. They and do. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. So I kind of gave up on that. Mm. And yeah. And okay. now it's, and now it's back. Now it's back. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, you live once, right? It's true. Nobody yeah. knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows how it's going to be. No, I so know. we have different expectations. We we have different wishes. Yeah. How it's going to be, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's one thing we can learn in the last year is nobody knows how anything is going to play out. Mm-hmm. So make the best of it and Yeah. You know, no more regrets. Mm, that's good. Is that your? Is that a, a motivational thing for you? Where you like, you had a point in your life. This is like one of my favorite things. Lisa always says to me, "You say that every single episode." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes you have to convince yourself too, right? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I feel yeah. the, I feel the same. You know, if I don't do this now, when am I? When am I going to do it? It will not be done. Yeah. It will not be done. Yeah. You know, it's, I would rather fail at something than not know how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Because if it doesn't work out, at least you tried. It's, if you don't try, then you're not going to get it at all. You have to take that leap of faith, take a chance and, you know. Yes. And that's kind of what, what I've been doing in the last year was, Take a chance. Like, mm-hmm. what's the worst that can come out of, well, not all situations, but yeah. you now most situations, what are they going to do is tell you not right now? You know, like no is never no. It's not right now. It's, you know, get some more experience and come back. It's, it's mm-hmm. always a learning. It's always a learning experience. So, and it's kind of working out. And I know other people who are doing the same thing and wonderful things are coming from them. So Mm -hmm. it's hard to not want to encourage others to, you know, put yourself out there. Like, yes, let's see what's going to (laughs) happen. I agree with that, Ashley. I think, you know, when you get to the point where yourself, you do it, it's also good to empower other people because it's so easy to squish people and it's not as easy to empower people. Mm. And sometimes you have to be the other person's little voice of reason, their little nudge, you know, just to take that first step. Like you can't make anybody do anything, but sometimes you can give them a reason to want to do something. 
yes. for themselves. Yeah, because it's in yeah. a way it's trust. They they come to you. They have an idea. They show it to you. This is trust. This yes. this is the initial spark they have. You wanna you know you. This is so easy to kill. <laughs> it's so easy to kill, yeah. but it's so worth doing though. <laughs> yeah. So you jumped in with two feet now. You all in. Yeah, absolutely. This is it's, it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now or never. Okay. So now in high school, we learned you 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 wanted to have a little bit more mass than you know than wasn't there though. But yeah. overall, you 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 finished. You graduated. You are you born and raised in Thunder Bay? No, I'm actually. I've only been in Thunder Bay for three years. Oh, I'm. Wow. Yeah, I'm from Timmins, oh. which is about eight hours east from mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I started Happy Hooker when we moved here because I had to quit. I had two jobs and a side hustle back home. Mm -hmm. And when we had moved here, I was lost. Like I was working mm -hmm. 70 hours a week. Wow. I was, because I worked full time, I worked in the economic development office okay. um, back home. And then I was a fitness instructor. So I worked multiple hours a day teaching classes. Yes. I was taking extra courses for work. So extra college courses. And then I had my side hustle. So I was just nonstop. Go, go, go plus a baby. We had four dogs. It was just nuts. Wow. So when we got here and there was nothing like no family, no friends, no job, no nothing. Mm. It was It's a crash. I was so depressed. Wow. I was beyond depressed. because I was just like, well, what do I do now? Mm. <laughs> like the days were long and I just, <laughs> <laughs> just yes. long i needed something to yeah when you come to that and... was mine yeah you know something that was mine something that gave me kind of some sort of pride like yes. i'm not a lump on the rock you mm -hmm. know i'm just so yeah i've been my business has been for three years i've been here for three years and mm. yeah it's been wild ride for three years <laughs> yes yeah i i have yeah. huge respect for anybody who is on their own two feet and produces with what they have what they do because it's it's a big thing you just mm -hmm. like it's you are all on your own <laughs> yeah there's no oh, okay i'm gonna do from nine to five and then i'm home and i don't have to worry no you are everything yes. now there's so much you know i like i said before this i worked at econ like in the economic development office so i got to see and 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 talk to small business owners mm. and a lot of a lot of my friends back home are self-employed and run their own businesses and i've seen them build their business from you know their basement to now they have 50 60 people on staff right so yeah so i kind of learned from them i was inspired by them i obviously got some good insider info and mm. i got to sit on some really like so many interesting meetings and that really helped me with my business and my perspective. And I found it really, really helped me appreciate the um, entrepreneurial mindset that there is in Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. I Thunder Bay is unlike anything else. It is so It's so heartwarming to see all the businesses right now, you know, come in together. But even when I first got here, just the downtown, I, I kept thinking, these are all little mom and pop shops. These mm. are all people doing it for themselves. Yeah. You know, and coming from that to here was, was mind boggling. Mm. It was 
the first craft revival that I attended, we moved here in July yeah, and I was kind of bummed about this whole transition. And then I attended craft revival. The first one that I went to the Christmas one. Yeah. yeah. And it was, I found it was my way. I thought, well, all these businesses are open. Let's go check them out and just kind of browse and see what it's all about. And I I just fell in love with Thunder Bay like that was my Mm. I belong here moment kind of. Yeah, that was my. (laughs) Did you feel that creator spirit or or like the possibilities and the community? I guess everything. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. because I started my business maybe a couple weeks after that because I was like, I could do this. Okay. That was my. Wow. I can do this. Did you? Yeah. Did, did you draw out a business plan? Did you just like old old school? You're like this is what just I'm going to do. No, you just like okay. Yeah, because back then it was just I only took custom orders back then, and okay. Because I I I was scared of having stock that nobody would buy or I understand you know so I figured. And I just, I didn't think it was going to be, I was going to be as busy as I was. And, you know, it just snowballed really fast. And, uh, yeah, Mm. it's, uh, every year it changes, it evolves, right? And Mm -hmm. I should probably do a business plan, though. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, the way you you handle the social media, you you know, you, you have... I find when I look at your Instagram, I feel like the way it is presented, it's so good. It's like leading. You know what I mean? It's like I can take things away from it. I can I, I can oh. learn things from it. You Thank know? you. That's, that's yeah. That means a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I struggle with, <laughs> with Instagram so much. Really? Wow. Thank you. I think it's just the, maybe the lack of, confidence at times or mm. the Sorry. nobody's gonna think this is interesting maybe I don't yeah know. this is like the what is it called the um imposter syndrome there you go yes that it is correct yeah yeah does that trouble you sometimes not anymore good because once you once you call it out then it has no control on you, right? Mm. And you can be like, this is this mentality going on and you can shut down that right away and be like, no, like, Mm -hmm. I got this. Yeah. But until you know what it is, it's going to just completely take over your mind Mm. and run you to the ground. Yeah, it's strong. It can be, yes. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a work in progress. And I... I believe a lot of us suffer from it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To a certain, I, I, certain extent, right? Yeah. No, I can relate to that too. You know, sometimes uh-huh. I I hustle and I, you know, I do like, I do something which I, I think is going to be fantastic. And then I don't see the things that I would like to see from it. And I'm just yeah. like, hmm. But I'm... I'm learning to let go of certain things that I think I should judge myself by. What are you trying to judge yourself by? Like, what are the things that Mm. I would, I would, you know, I would judge myself by, Hey, who liked what I posted or who liked, how many views did I get today? Oh, you know, yeah, like the stats, the numbers, eh? Yeah, well, and that's that's okay too. But I yeah. I've stopped looking at numbers, and it's it's just it's it's impossible, you know. Yeah. I, I because I like what I'm doing, and I don't need to be liked to do what I'm doing. <laughs> this sounds pretty it bad. Makes <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense. Yes, it, but sounds, it really does. That's what you want, right? Yeah. Like, yes, I like to do podcasts, and you know, you don't have to like it. So be it. I do it for me as myself, and I know, you know, I, I got people behind my back. They said I want to sponsor you, and I said thank you very much. And yeah. you know, that's that's good enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be. You have to 
it's it's like the job right like you can have the best job in the world you know the most biggest title but if you're miserable inside what's the point like it's yes you know yes. but at the same time you you do i i get you check the numbers you check the stats and it's hard to not be consumed by those numbers and yeah it is hard but it is possible and you should not you know everything is different never everything is the same and There was this pattern, even with us by the giant, I did first with Logan together. You know, we had some yeah. certain people we had on and we were thinking, oh, this is going to blow up. This is going to be, it. this is going to take us to the next level. But true enough, nothing happened. But it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, but you have that, you, I think disappointment is inside you. You created yourself, you know, because. It's expectation. Because of your expectations. Yes, it is. Expectation is poison. Yeah. How do you how do yeah. we how do we not get disappointed in expectations? Is that because is that goal setting? Is that thinking about different things differently? Hmm. That's a good question. That's the million dollar question right there. Hmm. I, I don't have an answer to that one. But that is definitely a good question. Yeah, I think it's 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 and excuse myself, please. It means giving zero fucks. <laughs> I think that's what it comes down to, you know. Thanks for the applause. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We need a lot less of those, yeah. you know, because. But it's like you said, you want to be able to do something because you love it, mm -hmm. you know, like. I find if you expect high numbers, it, you're not going to find that sense of success in the number. You're going to find success on how you feel. And yes. numbers don't equal authenticity, right? You can sell your soul for numbers, but it's not going to be, you know, you're not going to have the right followers. You're not going to have the right engagement. You're not going to have... yes. You know, all of these things that don't equate to success or all these happiness at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. You want to, and it's not everybody who can, even I sometimes struggle with that. And I'll be like, well, I want 60,000 followers on Instagram too, right? But it's like, I know. At, but it's like at the end of the day, it's like, that doesn't mean that those people are following you for the right reasons. It doesn't mean that, you know, I would rather have a hundred people who I engage with and yes. motivate and yeah. connect with yeah. than that many strangers who it's just ringing crickets, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, but that's me. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I hear you. Somebody else would be the complete opposite. And <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah, and for and sure. that's okay. Yeah. The like this is one of the reasons when somebody says, "Hey, I found out this algorithm, and you should do this and do that," and that's fine. I, I know you do what you yep. want to do, but it's like one of the things that relates to me. What you just said was where you don't um, you want people to follow you because they want to follow you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's where the value is. Absolutely, definitely. Yes, definitely. Mm. Yeah. But those algorithms are a real pain in the butt, though. Let's face it. <laughs> the way they switch things up, you're like, oh, I have to learn something new again. <laughs> like, updates. Oh yeah. Yeah. Facebook, is, yeah. Facebook is the worst for updates. Sorry, Facebook. But if they update something. I know what? I, I, I quit Facebook in the summer. <laughs> it was... Good for Glorious. You. Everybody was all stressed out. Now I'm just like, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> life good. is peachy because. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. Yeah. Especially this summer. My mm. goodness. And even now, still, I have a hard time with, with Facebook. It's it's tough. Facebook's a rough one. Like that's. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I run it mostly for search engine. You know, because, you know, there's another creation, another name thread yeah. that tracks you. That's why I even do Twitter still. 
I, I try to. Yeah, I know, right? Don't laugh about this. <laughs> no, you know what? I just joined Twitter um, in January for like the first time. And I think I was on it for, I was on it to look for the Bernie, the mittens, Bernie mittens, because yeah. apparently they had their own account. And I was like, I need to see this account. I've never found it. Mm. And I haven't been on it since, but yeah. that's what got me to go on Twitter. And I was like, I do not understand this whatsoever. It just looked so complicated. I think they got like over 20,000 orders. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Yeah. Is that something you would want to do? You want to do, do some Bernie mittens? No. No, no. Right? no, what? I don't like making two of the same identical item side by side because they never turn out identical. Yes. No matter what you do, there's always somehow one extra stitch on one <laughs> and it just throws everything off. Like one stitch makes everything so obvious, whether they're slippers or mittens or mm. it's like, there's always one that turns out wonky and I'm such a type a personality that that one stitch drives me nuts. Mm. And I just like, you want to make 20,000 mittens and knock yourself out. Yeah, like You go ahead right now. Yeah, go right ahead. I'll buy them from you. Because, <laughs> you know. Because yes. you learn that just because you can make something doesn't mean that you should make something. Okay. You know. And there are experts in everything. There's somebody who loves to make whatever and mm -hmm. just and it's sometimes it's just easier to give somebody else that joy like they love making it and it makes me miserable have at her i will gladly give you the money yeah. for you to have some joy and then in return i have joy because i'm not mm -hmm. miserable making something i don't want to make <laughs> <laughs> yes that's, that's like, a good explanation i like that i like that yeah. very much yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But you do you, do you like the design though of those mittens? Oh, absolutely. They're kind of nice. I I thought it was, and it was so the story behind it was so touching as well, right? Like it was a maker in the states who made these for Bernie f years ago. Yeah. Like these were not new. These were you know mm. I think two years old. Okay. And. uh she made them out of recycled sweaters with, you know, so it was so ah. the recycled mittens with, you know, these eco-friendly yarn. And the sad part about it is some states in the United States require makers to have a tax license mm -hmm. to sell at a market. Okay. And this poor maker was, ran out of business for taxes like she couldn't even sell at a farmer's market or a craft market because of the taxes right so it kind of brought that issue to light and where you know bernie came from because he's so for the people yeah so it just kind of all tied that back in together and mm. yeah yeah i so. didn't know all those details that's a good story yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. so now she's able to pay for her kids' college <laughs> because of she's she's made that much money that she's paid yeah. college for her kids, and that's awesome. Like, yeah. that's good for her, you know. Yeah, and she's doing her dream. She just, you know, she didn't listen to anybody else, she did what she wanted to do, and then from one day to another, everything overnight. changed. Yeah. yeah, overnight, and all it took is. You know, sitting in the freezing cold. <laughs> yeah. He could have worn them after that and nobody would have known. I you know, know, right? He could have worn them going in, take them off and wear them coming out. And nobody would have seen these mittens. I like, know. Like, that's <sighs> what I mean. You got to take a chance. How do you, how else are you going to know? Like. Yeah. yeah. And that's why it's good <laughs> to keep going too, you know? Yeah. Somebody, Never give up. Yeah. Somebody just, you know, the. The guy who took the picture, he took the picture and then it went and then that's it. That's the end of the story. Like this. Mm. Well, I remember watching the inauguration and I was like, 
and you see everybody all dressed up and you could tell it was cold and you could see Bernie in the back freezing. And I was like, if that was me, that would be me back there <laughs> freezing in the little, <laughs> right? And yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, it was everywhere, like two hours later. And it was, mm. <sighs> did you did you do a post with Bernie? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. Not on my own business. I shared them. Okay. Ah, uh, um, okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do mine because there were so many other good ones mm. that again it was like we're gonna let the experts or the other pros do it and just gonna laugh along with it because Yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah. But, there were some really good ones. <laughs> they were. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like he was all over Thunder Bay. Not only, but you know. Yeah. That was those were fun, like the Where's Bernie in Thunder Bay. I saw that one on um and f- somebody on Facebook did that and they little Bernie it was like Where's Waldo? But it's yeah. Bernie, like one on the ship and one's in the crowd. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fun. I talked about this book and you know you just brought this up. Hey you is it Valdo in English? Where's Waldo. Waldo, yeah. In, in yeah. English it is, hey, where is Waldo? And we all know this book, right? It's this person dressed, yeah. very tall, skinny guy. And he's dressed in the sweater, the glasses. Yeah, you know. The, those and things. the tube, yeah. And, yeah. In, in German, it's not Waldo, it's Walter. Oh, okay. So I texted my I a friend of mine, Kaylee. He, I had him on the podcast uh, because he posted a picture where I... I somehow in my mind I saw him being Valta, which means. <laughs> but he was like, "Who's this guy? I don't know." And then I was like, "Oh wait, hang on a second. So I sent him a, I sent him a picture of it, and then he says, "Oh, this is." And then in his language, because he's from Korea, so I just this is too good to give away. He said in Korea they call him Wally. 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 So that's like it seems like every country has a different version of Valdo. <laughs> I think that's good. That's good stuff. <laughs> I wonder where I wonder who he was based on. You know, if he was based on the person, the artist who drew him. Mm. If he was based on somebody that they knew or was just yeah. I don't know, alter ego or Yeah. That's a good thought. Yeah, maybe we're gonna have to check that out after. <laughs> yeah, maybe some uncle, you know, I don't know. Yeah, hmm. it'd be a good story, hopefully. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, do you think they're gonna release a book of Where's Bernie? I'm surprised they haven't yet. Hmm. Surprised they haven't yet. Okay. Maybe. What is the difference between crochet and knitting? Allow me to ask this because you brought this up earlier and I was like, oh, what does that mean? Knitting, you have two needles. So you you would use two different, I don't have any. Mm. Um, there are two different needles. They're pointy, sharp needles. And you use both needles to make the fabric. And uh, crochet is with just a hook. Oh. So you use one hook for crochet, and then you'll use um, two needles for for knitting. Mm. So it'll the fabric, the way it's made is different because it's a different technique. But crochet takes more more yarn to make the same piece of fabric as knitting. It takes a third more yarn than knitting does. Why is that? Surprisingly. Sur- just I guess the way it's made. I'm not I'm not exactly sure why, but mm, because all I know is that it yeah. is it maybe because it's tighter? Could be. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, right? With one needle, uh, two needles. I think the two oh. it's just the way the maybe the yarn is placed to create the actual stitch. Mm. Um to make it more solid with on its own with a hook rather than with the two needles. Yeah. Wow. And why do we need both? What is the what is the advantages of each? 
Well, I think it was just how it was created because these are all old arts, right? Like Ninny was done um, by royalty back when it was first done. It was done by royalty and it was actually uh, men who used to knit, okay. not women. Yeah. And then... Uh, That's okay. Yeah. And then actually most, a lot of the, the big designers are all men. They're still all men. Mm. Um which I think is well, should maybe put more spotlight on it just to show that fiber arts can be manly. You know, that it's not just a woman's, a woman's pastime or, or cre- creative arts or, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, it's, they used to do it with the Vikings to have it nice and keep them nice and warm with the wool, yeah. Icelandic wool. And Ooh. yeah, so it's cold up there too, just like Canada. <laughs> right. <laughs> My goodness. So mm. yeah, there's a long, long history of it. Mm. It's uh, quite interesting. Yeah. You know, regarding the Vikings, they, they had this TV show and, you know, they show sometimes the, the women, they have this device and then they just fold it like down and it's just all fabric. That's, that's webbing or weaving or what that's weaving. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Weaving. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole, we have weavers in town mm-hmm. and uh, that is, it's amazing to watch them. Like, cause it takes so much, so much knowledge and experience to be able to just watch them do it so eloquently. Just, zone out and yeah mm. it's that's a whole other art form it's beautiful yes yeah okay Definitely. yes but it's it is comparable to the trade that you are also involved in right yes yes for sure yeah yes Ooh, that's nice yeah okay and now what's your favorite crochet or yeah i prefer crochet um myself and other people would be the opposite myself it's because i can figure out the math i know how to do the math can you and i know how to how to make stuff right with it and okay can you elaborate on this with the math like what is happening like are we doing what are we doing like let's let's say if we're making let's say we're making a scarf okay i'll take it nice and simple so a nice big long rectangle and what if you have it in your mind, how big you want it. Say if you want it five feet or six feet or mm. whatever long. And then what we'll do is I would just, with the yarn that you want to make, and you can research however technique or pattern that you want to make. And then you would do what we call a swatch, which is a sample piece. Yeah. And then... I would figure out to say if it's however big the sample piece is, is like three or four inches. And then you would create just a mini little version. And then from there, I would take the measurement. Okay, well, this many stitches and this many rows gave me three inches. Uh. If I want it 10 feet by 12 10, 11 inches, then you kind of mm-hmm. figure out the math and then you could do the same thing by weighing Ooh. the yarn ah. to figure out how much you would need to make the total piece. And that's how you know how to, how much to order, okay, how much to procure, because that's a whole other issue. <laughs> yes. I can, I can only imagine. I can only yeah. imagine. Ashley, yeah, you can, you can so, tell me right now if you have a full room of yarn. That's okay. I do, actually. <laughs> yes. I believe you. My couch, I my couch is one of those storage couches. Mm-hmm. So when you lift the bottom up, yeah, and the storage is full of. That's beautiful. I love that. It's awesome. Yeah, it's the best couch ever. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of part of the the math aspect of it is to figure out what your your demo piece is and how big you want it. And then that's the algebra, right? Like if A plus X equals D, yeah. then you kind of have to figure out 
the that unknown. Kind of yes. The unknown, you yeah, know? You so you can do that, that for, yeah. So it's the same thing. Like if you take a pattern and you see a pattern that you like, but it's not in the size. Now it's the sizes are more, exclu- more inclusive, but some of the older patterns are not mm. as size inclusive as they are now. So if you find an older pattern and it doesn't fit you or it doesn't come in the size that you need, then you can, you can modify and figure out the math to make the adjustments to make it the size that you do need. Ah, so. Wow. This is like tailoring then almost, right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Because that's, yeah. that's then custom. Custom. A custom. Yeah. yeah it's it custom on It's definitely. Yeah. Exactly. Custom order. Yeah. So if that's, that's handy in so many opportunities and also like, I've come across where people have like different lengths of a feet, a foot. Foot is lo- that one is longer or wider, but now even with arms, sometimes that happens too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I made uh, the sweater I had made in. Uh, That's in beautiful. January, she, you know, they said, "Oh, just do it for so many inches." And then I put it on and it came up to here. And I was like, wow, I need like an extra six inches. Mm. Right. So then it was to figure out how to shape the sleeves because the sleeves are not usually box style. Uh. They're usually inverted. But if you keep making it go too small, then it's too small to put your hand. Mm. We have a very special guest in the background. Candy. (laughs) Please give it up. Candy is in the house. She's looking for something to chew on. Oh, um, it's a beautiful cat. I love that pattern. She's my my little COVID kitty. Mm, it's cute. And, uh, yeah. I'll try to teach the little one a little bit of empathy, right? And yeah. how to take care of another living being. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot of responsibility. And it is. It is. It is. Yeah. But you have to show compassion and feelings for others. And yeah. Make time. Okay. Yeah, their needs and, you know, clipping and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, oh, but beautiful. yeah, so it, there's a lot of, a lot of different little things that go into making custom pieces, especially garments, like clothes and stuff. There's a lot of things to consider when oh. making clothes. So okay. it come, it just comes with practice and it comes with the experience and, mm. It's one of those things you can't give up if you mess up the first time. You know, there's so many more opportunities to learn and try again. It's yeah, and yeah. So you would you would you say you have very strong hands, or what does what kind of power do you need for this? Like, where is the strength? Like mountain climbers, they can lift themselves with their fingers. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can um, do that too, right? I wish I used to be a fitness instructor for seven years. Ah. So I used to teach everything from not like weightlifting in the normal context of like bodybuilding, but Mm -hmm. um, it's a program from called Les Mills. Okay. It's from New Zealand and uh, their program is body pump. So it was Mm. a program where, It wasn't how heavy you can lift, but it was for how long you can Ah, lift it. Good. So you would build muscular endurance instead of like a cardio endurance or a mix of both. And um, having to hold a barbell and weights and all of that stuff kind of gave us like superhuman strength, you know? Yeah, it it prepared you. (laughs) Yeah, it did. So, mm. and you know what? When just just being a mom, right? You're having to make stuff or hold the baby, you know, hold know. the phone, like I'm a the, lot of things. I'm the opposite. Like I, I do try to like do some exercise, and then like, yeah, Lisa can yeah, because you do like rowing and stuff, right? In your career, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm like, I'm, I'm weaker because of it. Like Lisa can hold the baby longer than I can. 
because my muscles are sore. Maybe I don't know, but she is、yeah. she is stronger. No,、yeah. no matter what, she like I cannot compete with her. She's she's stronger. <laughs> I always said women are built to go and men are built for show. <laughs> like, There you go. That's you know? a good one. That's a good one. It was,、yeah. you know.、Um, yeah. So yeah. So it's just, but you have to be careful though when you're knitting and crocheting because there are injuries. You can get a lot of injuries from it from overstraining and repetitive movements. Like you have to worry about carpal tunnel syndrome. Yes. Problems in your neck, your shoulders, your back. Mm. So you know you have to worry about stretching and yoga and ice and all of this other stuff, just like anything else. So、uh, okay, so you do that. Yeah. Like, obviously, you've been very、uh, involved in the fitness industry.、Yeah. If you were a teacher, but、yeah. instructor,、yeah. now do you、yeah. you still like prioritize us then? No,、um, I've had some medical stuff. Okay.、Um, my pregnancy was really,、mm. really rough. I guess it、yeah. was really scary. I had,、um, I have a blood clotting problem. I、oh, know conditions, and I get lots of blood clots.、Mm. And、uh, with my daughter, it I had really bad morning sickness. The minute I got pregnant. I just pretty much have been on bed rest ever since, and I tried to get back in it, and then it's like, oh,、no. you have to go back on bed rest. Oh, you have to do this, but、mm. I had surgery for it right before Christmas, and、okay. that's my my next goal for this year is to get back into、mm. teaching classes, hopefully, because I miss it. I miss teaching fitness classes. Yeah, if you've been、yeah. if you've been doing it for a while, you you it's part of your life, right? Yeah, I just I feel like I'm a teacher, but not in a classroom kind of teacher. Like I teach like before COVID, you know, I would teach crochet classes, and、yeah. you know, like I just feel like I'm just a, a teacher in that way, right?、Mm-hmm. So I definitely would really like to get back into teaching fitness classes. I I definitely miss a the accountability. Like there's nothing like having to teach, you know, a fitness class nine、yes. a.m. on a Saturday and on a Sunday. You know,、mm-hmm. you won't do that hungover more than once. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah,、mm. but that you do, you do that a couple times, and you're like, that's. But、yes. it's a is the accountability, but、mm. there's such a. It's a different kind of bond you make with people,、mm-hmm. in that you know it's when you're part of somebody's journey. No matter what type of journey it is, there's such a an intimate bond that's created, and it's I don't know, it's、mm-hmm. not to say, but I kind of miss that.、It's, that's something from back home that I miss. Yeah, it's special. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. When you when you. Do those classes now? Not the fitness, but you said you do crochet, crochet. class. Yeah. Now, yeah. allow me to ask this: Are、sure. uh, is are your clientele? Is it now suddenly again more younger people? Is this no? Is, is it coming back, or is it people all over, or do you can you group it? What's what's happening? I I would say most. Of the participants were newly retired、mm. people. Okay, is it calming? Something that they learned from their grandparents, or they learned when they were kids, and they totally forgot. But now they have all this free time. Yes, you yes. know they have grandbaby. They have grandbabies on the way. They have、mm. all this grandkids that they want to, you know, make stuff for. So. Yeah, that's. I found most of them were newly retirees.、Mm. Yeah, but that could be that could be any age group, right? People retire nowadays with thirty years. I heard. <laughs> I heard. <laughs> I I want to know what they were doing to be retired at that age. <laughs> I know. Me too, because I'm late, obviously. <laughs> oh my! I I missed the boat somehow. That was. 
definitely not something that they offered a career day. <laughs> yes, they missed on our high school. Why didn't we teach that, right? Mm. Right. Yeah. But okay. yeah, there could be, and I guess it would all depend to what the project would be. I'm sure if like my shawl classes would be usually an older demographic, but I'm sure if I came around with, I don't know, um, like a skirt or mm. even um, last spring before all this wonderful COVID was coming along, I was going to teach um, just how to make like a market bag, a reusable yes. market bag. Yes. And that was a younger crowd. So again, I guess it would depend on on what the project is, but yeah, yeah, Actually, it's for everybody. Is yeah. that then all? Is the bag, for example, is that then with a liner inside and everything, like the complete package, or? Well, that one there was going to be just for like a produce bag. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the farmer's market you just put your produce in and kind of reuse it yeah i have made bags with liners in it um but unfortunately sewing is not my mm. strong suit i can do basic sewing um even my last one of my last weekends out before lockdown was a sewing class mm -hmm. um And thank goodness I did it because all of a sudden we had a whole bunch of sewing to do. Yes. But, you know, it's, I, I could definitely teach it mm. how to do it. Um, maybe that would even be a great idea to collaborate with a sewing instructor, you know, like. Yes. I'll show you how to make the bag and she could teach you how to line it, you know. Like, yes. You know, things like that. So definitely different ideas, but. Mm opportunities and the ideas are endless. So yeah. it could be anything. Yeah. They have that, um, the, that sewing shop there. Katrina, do you know her? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's a great lady. Absolutely. Mm. I, I, yeah, definitely. It was great. That yeah. was a great memory. You know, <laughs> mm. we always think about right before what happened the lockdown and, That was where I was at. That's oh, what I okay. was doing. Yeah. 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 She helped us with some design for us by the giant uh, a stitching on a cap. And she has yeah. those machines. You just, you bring a USB stick. You, you yeah. like, it's just so good. I have to tell you about it. And then the machine reads the file and then it's just stitches automatically. That must be wild to watch. I just, Yeah. <laughs> the machine go at because people yeah. also you know there's there's different appreciation for made by hand or made by machine yeah and now i mean like for some and different reasons too oh yeah for sure yeah but like a handmade sweater you you can't compete with that it's just like no. that's the best yeah. but it's so nice that we have people and businesses who have this equipment yes, and the knowledge and the experience and just be like, I have this idea. Can we make it work? And it's like, mm. you know, I have the machine for you. You bring it over and, you know, bring me your USB stick and we'll make it work. You know, like how fortunate are we to live in a city and in a time where that's even a possibility. Like, mm -hmm. that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So where did she put, like, what, what did they do on the hat? Uh, we did the, the, logo, right? the logo, yeah, 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 that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was nice, you know, yeah, it was all it was all done right here in Thunder Bay logo and cab, and you know, it just was perfect. We just did yeah. a small run and I gave it away to all the, the kids. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like Lisa's <laughs> brothers and sisters, they have kids, and I just said, hey, take it, take it, just check it out, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> You know? Well, then they wear it, and then they wear yeah. it out in a boat, and yeah, that's a really good uh, market run, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I did it just because you know it. We were f still fine tuning it, and it wasn't the perfect stuff, and that's yeah. fine. But it, the possibility is there, and I, for me, it felt wrong to say, "Okay, I'm going to sell this now." Yeah, but then I just you know it felt good to give something away because kids oh, kids have different eyes you know They're, in their minds things are better 
They do. Yes. And that's... They're not, they're, they don't have that everything from me. Life hasn't, you know, ruined their imagination. Yes. <laughs> and they, they just, everything is magical in their eyes. Everything is like, wow, mm. that's awesome. Yeah. You know? If I would have known that before, I'd, I, we, I would have, and Lisa, we together, we wouldn't have need to buy any toys. <laughs> just the box <laughs> yes it's an empty box yeah. I don't want the toy but can I have the box please yes no it's not for sale ah. yeah yeah it's true <laughs> yeah one of the yeah, that's great one of the things for the studio I I <clears throat> upgraded before and like during lockdown number one I got those big light things and uh, those uh, stands for the cameras And it, it came in a huge box because everything was locked. And I, you know, I, this was the thing yeah. I, I could do. Yeah. And the yeah. box was so big, all the kids could fit into the box. That was perfect. And I think we had, <gasps> we had that box like in the living room for months. Jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <sighs> oh, for sure. That's boxes are the best. I remember being a kid and coloring them the whole box and trying to make a car out of it mm. coming home from school and the box is gone. And it was like, why? <laughs> That's my box. Yes. <laughs> It's like, you have all these toys to play with, but I colored that box. <laughs> mm. It was such a fight yeah. to get rid of boxes. We had yeah. many, many, many boxes. <laughs> how, how do you, yeah. How do you feel when you do those reels? You know, you 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 film yourself and with the camera, and you, you know, you you. It looks like I love that kind of content. It really like I can I can get to know you. I know Ashley. You know, you doing this. I want to know how how is that for you? Nerve wracking. Mm. Is it getting better? I wish I maybe had, I feel like I, I need better equipment for it. If I was going to be honest, I feel like, hmm, mm. I just, I don't know. I feel like I don't have the right tools to and create what I envision in my mind. If that makes sense. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's what do you need? because it's not what I want in my mind. Then it's like, oh, it's so, yeah. Are you a perfectionist then? Mm. Yeah, she's she's saying just a little bit. You can't see it, but if you watch it, you can see it. But if you listen to, it, oh yeah. yeah, oh no, I'm 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 a proud perfectionist. <laughs> That's good, right? To a certain extent, mm. you know, Are you when you're so scared of doing something because it won't be perfect, mm. when you go in and you're like, oh, I know this is not going to be perfect, so I'm just not going to bother, mm. then it becomes a problem. I'm uh... slightly working on it. I'm starting to slowly go, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Mm. Yeah, I bet the, kids, the kid is helping you. Uh realizing that too right in a way being a mother or parent yeah i don't know it, it just she everything with her is just oh mom this is wonderful you know like i feel like i can't really take her opinion. Mm, okay <laughs> because it could be totally horrible and she'll you know she won't tell me that it's crap she'll just be like hmm Your mom, you're my best friend, you know, like that's beautiful though. But yeah. Oh, for sure. I try to get her involved in all of this and try to show her kind of how it's done. Mm -hmm. So and I always tell her, you know, when you get older, if you want to learn, you know, mama will teach you. Nice. You know, but yeah. No pressure if you don't. <laughs> yeah. But I like yeah, that. I find, yeah, the reels are, and I, I'll be honest, I usually try to do them because her dad and I are, are, are not together. So I try to get that stuff done when she's not home. Mm -hmm. And I try to get a lot of my work done when she's not around. Yes. 
Um, the way we've worked it out is he gets every weekend off. So instead of us having to put her in daycare because daycare is ridiculously expensive and they're always sick. You're paying for daycare days. And they're never there because they're always sick, right? So we worked it out where she doesn't have to be in daycare. So I do most of my work when she's gone. She's gone every weekend. Yeah. So, and at night, or I'll get up early in the morning and yes. or at homeschool. So I can dedicate that time with her one-on-one. Yes. So a lot of that stuff is done on the weekends. So she doesn't really see it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes she will really quick and she'll be like, what's she doing? Mm. I'll be like, oh, I'm doing a video. Oh, well, film me. And she'll start dancing and it's like, we're going to do this on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, ta- but, it takes time too. It really does. It, yeah. it, it feels like it cuts into so much of the making process. Mm. And like, if it takes me seven hours just to sew sleeves on, it takes even longer to actually make something. Mm -hmm. And when it takes me like an hour to do a one minute reel, all I can think is, you know, I could have made this by now or. Yeah. So Mm. I wish I had like a team to kind of do that and be like, you tell me what to do. You do the rest, you know, and I know there's people who do that. Maybe that's a business goal, Mm -hmm. make enough money to, outsource kind of tasks and jobs one day yeah you feel comfortable about that because it's it's your branding right it's like you have yeah you have your vision would you would you are you going to be able to like say okay now you know what i trust you for this you can do it well you'd have to find somebody who is on the same page as that yeah and there are people there are people that this is their job i mean Mm mm-hmm I wish I had the money to outsource yeah. and have somebody be like, okay, we're going to sit down and we're going to work on whatever Instagram, you know, social media pictures, videos, reels for the week, you know, in two hours and that's it. And mm. they took care of the rest. Oh, wow. Okay. That would be awesome mm. because then that would free up so much time and I can produce more to, yeah. you know, it makes sense. One day, maybe. One yeah. day. It makes sense. The yeah. the social media is a huge drive for you as well, right? Because it's such yeah. a good exposure. It is. I Like I said, I had surgery right before Christmas. It was emergency surgery um, because of the blood clot history that I had okay. and with everything going on. Um. You know, COVID was really high. COVID caused the blood clots. It was, you know, the surgery and the medication I was on, everything was causing blood clots. So it was hunker down in your house. Don't come out. Don't let anybody in. But that was Christmas. For me, that was my peak time, which really was bad timing. And then in January, I'm like, well, what the heck am I going to do? Like... I need to figure something to do besides a market or be able to have stuff picked up or delivered or whatnot. Right. So I kind of told myself like, put yourself out there, Mm. try something new and let's see where it goes. And so since Christmas, even like since New Year's, because I had complications after. And anyways, it was a whole other thing. Okay. So I, I told myself January will be to try something new. And my goal was to increase exposure, mm-hmm. kind of just what can I do from bed rest kind of thing, you know, like I'm sitting in bed. Yeah. What am I going to do? And I've probably had, like I said, this is, Everything came to fruition this week. Um, All the work and all these crazy ideas Mm -hmm. that I did from bed rest worked out. Like it worked out. I am 
blown away. Like this week I'm beside myself with, holy crap, this worked. Maybe I should do this more often. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like maybe I should be on social media more often. I'm like, mm. okay, so I guess, you know, yeah. Facebook isn't the devil after all, you know? Yes. Uh, but like one thing I, I, I shipped it out on Sunday was a big Kamala square. It was a big square. Um, it's called a yarn bomb. Okay. I'm not Ooh. sure if you've ever heard of that. Usually it's items made with, with yarn. So it's either knitted or crocheted and they create big, huge public art pieces with it. Okay. They'll cover statues or buildings and ah. stuff like that. Like Remembrance Day, there was a yarn bomb. I believe it was in Alberta. Okay. And it was all poppies, handmade crocheted poppies, and it lined the side of the church. I think I've seen that. Beautiful. Yeah. So in January, with the inauguration in the States, um, somebody did a yarn bomb of Kamala Harris's face, and I was like, holy cow, that's awesome. Mm. And now there is a project I, I I I somehow got picked okay to to be part of it. Of course you did. Not just well, there is, not just somehow. Well, you know what? There's some of like the biggest names in crochet, Ooh. like um, Jonah, the the nine. I think he's eleven year old savant. You know, he's a crochet wizard. Uh. Um, he's part of this project when we were all on a Skype call or a zoom call, mm. you can see in the chat and you're like, did you see Jonah is in here? And they were just like, what, <laughs> what, what? And we're like, Oh my God. And they're like, so-and-so is in here. So-and-so is in here. And I was like, how am I on a zoom call with these legends? Mm. Like, I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's so cool. Um, so it turns out there's 166 of us that got picked. Wow. We all made a two by two, two foot by two foot crocheted square. Mm. Um, I can't say no, no, what the final no. picture is it's because it's going to be right now it is. Yes. But at first it was supposed to be on a billboard going to downtown Los Angeles mm-hmm. and they were going to yarn bomb this in the middle of LA, which Ooh. I thought was like, <sighs> like, I was like, my crochet is going to be in LA before I ever get to LA. Like, how did that even happen? <laughs> <laughs> and on the call, they're like, yeah, it's not going to LA. And, I was like, oh. and they're like, it's going to DC. <laughs> Mm. We have Kamala Harris's team working with us. It's going to DC. Oof. I was like, what? Oof. Like, how crazy is that? Ah. And it's going to be unveiled for International Women's Day. Oof. So, how amazing is that? That's, I was like, uh... I did that on bed rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, like, that was, that's huge. Like, it is. And I love. Like, I just, she's such a firecracker. She's like, I've always been sort of be like, her team is actually like working hands on mm. with this. Like, Kamala's going to see this herself. Like, this is going to DC. Mm. Like, like, how? So that was one thing, one sort of exposure that I took a chance on. I was yeah. like, so that was kind of cool. And then now my, my patterns are going to be published. I found out yesterday that my math, my designs, like my sketches, I sent them out ah. to a magazine and they had a call out for, you know, they're like, oh, for Christmas, we're looking for some patterns. Do you, these are the different types of looks that we're going for. These are the different techniques that we're looking for. You've got something, send it to us. Mm. So there was, you know, we had to make her swatch. We had to do like our mood board. We had to do design sketches themselves, you know, pick out the different types of yarn and all of this, like just a presentation, a submission, an actual like design submission. And I sent in five and four out of the five got accepted. 
What? Which is. Wow. So I'm like, now I'm going to be in a crochet magazine, like crochet.com. <laughs> like at Christmas. And it's like, mm. and now I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I should be on social media more and make a little bit less <laughs> and kind of grow it from find, there. Yeah. Find a new venue from it. So yeah, that was a, an eye opener for sure because it was up to me. I would not be on. Mm. Hate it. I, it's not that I hate it, but no. Con- congratulations on those two huge achievements. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you also you. for sharing this. And that, yeah, I, it's the first time I get to say I got the okay to say that it was going to DC uh, last night. Up until then, <sighs> yeah, but. It, like I shipped it out to Virginia for it to be <clears throat> inspected. I'm sure it's inspected in a, mm. <laughs> with everything going on right now, if it's going to DC, it's mm. yeah. But yeah, we had to like send pictures with our info or our name or age or location. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you know, it's a different level of operation. Yeah, it's, a, I've, it's like the stuff that we hear out. I'm like, this is so cool. Like, mm. how did crochet end up there? You know, like, how did this tiny little, like, pastime turn into something so kind of like a league of its own? Like, it's, it's out there and it's so, it's such a crazy fun ride. It is. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, see, the, my personal p- opinion, and it mm-hmm. might be wrong, but I felt like everything with knitting and crochet is like is a revival right now. I feel like it's actually like because that's why I was surprised when I asked you, "Hey, your clientele when you do those meetups?" Yeah. You said it was like just retired because I feel like I've been. Even Katrina said it too. It's like younger people too, you know. It's not any more stereotype, you know. You cannot f- put it in one category. It's it's, yeah. all, it's also very many younger people. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping when yeah. all of this is kind of done and we can go back to teaching classes, I'm sure there's going to be a whole new crowd of students hopefully wanting to come in and I can expand my my repertoire and share my knowledge with them because I didn't really have anybody to teach me how to do this yes so it's all self-taught and it's much easier when somebody is there showing you yes. their skills right yeah, and, hand on and that's kind of what I'm hoping to do with the reels is showing them my little tricks my what I've learned the hard way or what I I discovered on my own and kind of share that with others. Cause Mm. it's not fun if you keep all your secrets to yourself. (laughs) No, I don't believe in that either. No, it's not that fun. Yeah. I just, I figured out how you can get text into the background when you talk, you know, it's, it's an app and it's, it's really, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really Mm. good. I tell you after. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to need that. Yeah, definitely. It's like, because when I listen to a story, it's for me, most of the time, the volume is off. And then I have to tap it on. But if I can read what the person is saying, then that's so much more engaging. And it pops right at the moment when the person is speaking. So it's it builds a connection yeah. with you. Yeah, definitely. It's good. Yeah, I definitely want to have it on silent. I usually don't have a lot of the volume on. Uh, most of the time, I'm not somebody who likes anything loud to start off with. But uh, yeah, I will definitely, I will definitely take the name of that app for sure. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's great. That would be great to have. Thank you. Oh no problem. Because you know, I didn't, I didn't find it. I asked somebody who was using it. I said, "Hey, what, do you, what are you doing? How do you do this? I need to do this right now." <laughs> Because it would be so long to have to type everything out. Yeah. Yeah. You just press a button and it takes it. It's like wording it into it. So good. 
So good. Technology. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's great. How do you how do you envision yourself in the future? Then are you like what what is your what what do you want to do? What's your plan? My I would love to. I, I would definitely love to have again all my pop, all my patterns published. Like my dream would still be New York City have like one piece on a runway somewhere. Mm. Like it doesn't have to be anything major, but just have one thing, and then I would feel like okay, I made it. Okay. Yes. And they do have them. They have crochet runways and crochet shows. And Ooh. That kind of thing. Ooh. Mm hmm. Like crochet wedding dresses. Have you ever seen a crochet wedding dress? I wish. I didn't. Oh, no, I, didn't. No, I gotta look that up. Mm hmm. Mm. Like crocheted ball gowns. Like that's, I'm, th I think that's the beauty pageant in, you know, growing up in me that was always like, look at the pretty dresses. And mm -hmm. that's like my end game would just be, or end goal would be, if I can make a wedding dress, I would be. Mm over the moon or a ball gown or something yeah. beautiful and grandiose and just. So that's, <laughs> that's a possibility, right? That's like if somebody, if somebody would, Hey, you know, they, they find out that's, that's, that can be done and you can do this actually, then that's a possibility. Absolutely. I always say, instead of being jealous that somebody is doing something that you wish you could do, you have to look at them as in, as inspiration that it can be done. Yes. So instead of hating somebody for doing your dream and be inspired by them. Yes. To make your dream come true. Yes. So yeah, I look at that kind of stuff. I look at runway dresses and, you know, mm -hmm. but even if it's not a crochet runway, you know, like you look at the big designers, you know, they're coming out with like, granny square dress and it's like well i could do that mm. <laughs> and not charge 10 grand for it you know like yeah kind of stuff like that but mm. yeah there's that little little girl dream of wanting to be that mm -hmm. fashion designer is kind of like itching to come out and stuff yeah and this time there's this is this is happening right this time you yeah. you are all out you're gonna do it And no matter what anybody says, because you've become all powerful and mighty. Yeah. Mm. And know what? All I could do is try. And if I don't make it there, I'm still going to have fun on A good time. trying. Yeah. 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 So, and who knows how anything's going to transpire. You know, something even better than that can come along and I have absolutely no clue. So, mm. But yeah, I, I mean, I would love to have, love to have pieces, maybe like, like my own pieces, like, you know, who knows? I, uh, world is, world is our oyster. We can, we can dream it. We can do it. So mm -hmm. just, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Here, here I was thinking before I asked the next question on the topics you just mentioned. Here I was thinking you were maybe thinking about like a storefront where you know you have you you would be there and that's where you teach or something like that. But that would be great. Oh. That would actually be really I, I I can't I won't lie. I I thought it. Mm. I've even thought of having even just having pieces like my own brand, my own items in different stores too. Like ah, who knows? yes, yes. You know what I mean? Like, who knows how that can be? Maybe it'll be a storefront. Maybe it'll be, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to say, well, this is what it'll be. And that's it. You know, there's so many opportunities. It could definitely be a storefront. It could definitely be a clothing line. It could be a book of patterns, you know, like you can write books, you can, You know, uh, that kind of stuff, right? Yes. You, you can do so many things with it. So, okay, yeah. How how do you get in New York City on the on the runway? How do you do that? Do you do you figure that out? No, not yet. Okay, 
I'm thinking it would have to do something with actually being there at one point or another. Mm, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, no. maybe, yeah. maybe, but it's all in connections, right? Like you, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. And it's all about building repertoire and meeting the right person at the right time. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things you can't plan out. You just have to be open to receiving those opportunities. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. So good. You're right. Yeah. Because sometimes we we don't even recognize them or we think it's not what we think it is. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Or sometimes some th- an opportunity will come and then there's that instant mindset of like, oh, no, you can't do that. Mm. Or I don't know how to do that. Or you're not good enough or whatever, right? It's all these little things that could happen and sometimes we self-sabotage yourself or we don't recognize it you you just have to believe in anything is possible and that anything at the drop of a hat can change your life in an instant for the good or the bad but let's be optimistic and say anything can change at the drop of a hat yes so you just got to be you have to you have to believe that you can that you're worthy of receiving it. You only get what you believe you deserve, right? So if you deserve you, if you believe you deserve greatness, then greatness will come to you. Yes. Kind of thing. Yes. So, yes. Do you meditate at all? This sounds like. I, yeah, I do. Uh, I swear by it. Good. Good. I like that. I'm a big, big meditator. I, uh, I meditate first thing in the morning when I, I feed the cats, obviously. Um, but I, uh, I will go and meditate even if it's just five minutes, usually more. I'm usually about 15, 20 minutes in the morning. Um, I'll do some yoga just to move some energy around Yes. journal. If there's anything oh, like wow. I have a collection of journals for all different little topics. So whether it's my even if it's just a prompt of like you wake up and you feel like crap, Mm -hmm. you know, you have a headache or you had a bad dream or whatever, just write it out. I believe in writing it out, getting it off your chest, off your mind, because otherwise it's just going to sit in you and stir and ferment and just build and build and build. So get it out there and then you can go on with your day. Yeah. And then, um, Every night before bed, I'll meditate, even if it's just five minutes, just to mm-hmm. like absorb what happened. And just because you, if you make peace with your day before you go to bed, then every day is a new day when you wake up. It's true. So, and if you don't make peace with it, it's just going to snowball and carry and carry and carry. Well, for me, anyways, like mm-hmm. I'm not a psychologist or anything, but. Yeah. Um, but through the pandemic, I've been able to quit um, smoking. Um, like I've been craving cigarettes, like it's going out of style. Mm. Um, I quit, I would say about 10 years ago. Um, I picked up casual smoking last year. Yes. <laughs> going through a divorce, that kind of like, that would do it, right? For sure. And then, but like I quit drinking alcohol altogether. So I, I don't drink, Mm. I don't drink coffee. I quit coffee. I quit all types of stimulants like social media. And I switched all of those with meditation. So anytime I'd be like, oh, I'm having a bad day. I need a drink. I'd be like, no, I'm going to go sit down, quiet it down for five minutes, Mm. ground myself, and then I'll come back. And if I'm, still not okay then i'm gonna go park my butt back down Mm -hmm. and write it out you know like get it out name the feeling what you're feeling like are you overwhelmed are you stressed are you mad why are you mad why are you and then once you get to that root then you don't have the urge to numb that feeling Mm -hmm. with alcohol or whatever right whatever the vice is shopping food i'm I used to be 300 pounds almost. I was 278 pounds at my heaviest. Okay. And food was my 
non non judgmental friend. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, you have a bad day. Let's go have a cookie. You know. Mm -hmm. Let's celebrate. Let's go eat a pizza. Like, yes. You know, eat your feelings away and stuff. So, meditation is the reason why I don't have to drink. I don't need the coffee most days I, I i'll drink coffee here and there but it's mm. not my i can't function without it kind of thing yes yeah, yeah. wow yeah you you figured I'm stuff out then Whew. well what else are you gonna do in a pandemic <laughs> <laughs> watch some Netflix, right? maybe <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah but you know what and i'm trying to teach my little one you know in the middle mm. of the day when it's like, where's my coffee? My morning was homeschooling was a complete gong show. You know, like I'm stressed out because all the work I wanted to do was not done. Yeah, I can't get there. And just like, and I'm like, and I'll tell her, mommy needs a timeout. You are more than willing to come do a timeout with me, but it's going to be quiet. Yeah, okay. You can stand there and watch me. I, I don't care, but mommy's going for a timeout mm. and I'll just sit there. And do some breath work. You can do some tapping, and just and then it's. And sometimes it doesn't even take five minutes. Sometimes it just takes two minutes. Doing some good breath work, and then just being okay. We're good. Mm -hmm. Like let's knock her out of the park, and then it's fine. Yeah. And sometimes an hour later, I'll be like, "Mom's gonna go," mm. <laughs> you know. Yes. But and that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's really good. The you don't have to like, elaborate on what you do when huh? you meditate, but do you like do you sit a certain way or do you lay or is there a certain um, position you you prefer? I will be definitely how I feel. Sometimes I just need to sit and breathe. You know, sometimes I just need to sit there, and sometimes mostly before my surgery, I would be in so much pain, mm. like physical pain that sitting would hurt. I wouldn't be able to like to sit on the floor was absolutely not even a possibility. So wow. a lot of it was sitting. Um, I'll be honest. I am a huge sleeper. So if I lay down and meditate, I'm napping. And okay. if by napping, it'll be like, four hours nice like, nice if you're gonna do something do it right right <laughs> i, I fall asleep what's, in what's bars a nap during... i know <laughs> i can sleep anywhere i can make it an olympic sports no problem wow. but so i i cannot do meditating laying down because it'll just knock me out it's one of the reasons i started crocheting because I couldn't even stay awake to watch a show. It'd just be like out. Mm. But a lot of the times it's just to sit and I can sit on the floor with my legs crossed. Okay. Um, I broke my foot, my ankle, my leg teaching uh, Zumba one day. Oh. And um, they've it had to be broken a couple times to try to end it just doesn't have the same flexibility. So mm. for me to be able to cross my legs and put my ankles up for me, that's just not something I'm physically able to do. Yes. But um, sometimes just, and if I'm feeling really slouchy, like I find to have a good meditation, you need to be sit up straight. And sometimes I I don't have the energy or I'm just so depleted. I'm just so worn down. Your body just, mm -hmm. it does wear down. So I'll sit up against the wall. I'll stick my legs out and be a nice, like mm -hmm. perpendicular, like 90 degree angle. And that'll work too. Sometimes even the cold wall on your back is enough to jolt you, you know, like mm -hmm. if you're tired or just need a boost that cold on your back, it's like, Ooh, okay. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, mm. that's something that that was something that was a I learned that one through experience. I didn't read that one, but yeah. it helps. It's sometimes if I'm getting that middle of the afternoon slump, two three o'clock hits, and I'm like, mm -hmm. cup of coffee or let's go do some breath work, sit up against the wall, and mm -hmm. you know have a nice glass of cold water after, and yeah. it makes. 
it makes a difference for me anyways. Yes, I think it would for anybody. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully somebody can learn something from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like that, you know. And plus you yeah. said also, you know, your your daughter sees what you do. And so she, uh, like, for me, sometimes I'm, I I have weights in the basement. So yeah. I'll, I'll just like, he, we have lighter weights and he just does some kind of weird movement too with it. Oh, yeah. You know? He's, oh, do you? They love that. Yeah, he's part of it then. And, and, she's, and so he's she, probably like, oh, I'm strong like daddy, you know? like he's, He tells me his muscles are so big right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I love that. You know? Absolutely. Like, Check out my muscles, Papa. Oh, and they're so proud of them. Eh? Mm. Like, oh. yeah. they grow. But it's true. They, they, they see everything we do, right? Mm. And we have to watch that because that's future generation mm -hmm. that's yeah yeah that's so cute that he sees you work out right yeah and it's like then he knows it's imp maybe it's not a priority but it's important you know it's like it's also routine it helps to create something i think it's really good yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely for sure it's a form of self-care it's a way of showing your body that you love it and you respect it you know it's good for your immune system it, there's so many advantages that kids need to see that because there's so much video games and netflix and you know there's so much netflix and chill that mm -hmm. pretty soon we'll just be chilling forever and <laughs> kind of thing but it's important for them to see how we take care of ourselves because that's how they're going to take care of themselves yes Yeah. yeah. You wonder about that sometimes, right? You become who your parents were in a way. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Definitely. Okay. And you can hear it when kids play with each other, right? They can, when they play whatever with their toys or role playing amongst themselves, you can hear yourself and the stuff that comes out of their mouth and you're like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Especially with Barbies and all that stuff. I was like, mm. did I say that? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And it definitely. seems, I think there's a good change in that, you know, in a way where we become more aware as parents that certain things change and then they are not anymore as acceptable as we were when we grew up. It's like, it's changing really quick. It is. Mm-hmm. I find it almost not difficult, but it's one of, it makes us aware of sometimes it's like, should I say that? Is that a good thing? Is this going to send my child to therapy forever? Like, are they going to come out? Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's you second, I find I second guess myself all day, every day. Like, If I say this, how do I discipline properly? Like, do I discipline? Am I over disciplining? Am I like, you know, and I, I I'm not sure if I'm the only one who feels like that, but mm. I feel very, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. It is not easy. No, no, it's no, not. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's still beautiful. rewarding. It is. Yeah, beautiful. absolutely. It's the it most is. beautiful thing parenting yeah definitely yeah. what's your favorite part of parenting the little things you know yeah yeah and it's like not even like just like trying to like remembering a memory when it happens put that i, I have things sometimes they go through my mind Casper starts walking now and he's he's here in a bit and you yeah. know i have him on my hand and we walk down the the island the living room or something and i just yeah. I picture this in my mind and I just, I want to remember this. Yeah. Or, or he wakes up in the middle of the night and, you know, it's, I get him, I have him in my arms, I hold him and, you know, he has his eyes closed and suddenly he smiles. And then the smile, oh. the smile goes away, right? You know yeah. that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the, the, that's what pulls on your heartstrings, eh? And you're like, yeah. oh. and you, I'm like, I'm going to remember this when you're having a fit. <laughs> 
you always remember this. It's like, yeah, I know. Yeah. And you know, I think with with the second child, I I'm able to appreciate parenting differently in a better way. Yeah, where it's I feel more confident. Probably I feel more secure. With the first one, everything was still very new. Oh yeah. So it's like it was totally different. Oh, definitely. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Second babies are always, yeah. They're like you said. You're you're less scared of messing up, mm-hmm. and you get to enjoy it more. Mm. And and you sometimes know that it's a phase or how fast this phase will last or how quick this phase will change and how fast they'll I'll grow something. Right. So when they do something, when you can hold them in your arms, right. You know that I'm not going to be able to do this forever. So I got to suck it up and make up, <laughs> yes, make the most of it. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because it doesn't really matter. You'll be in bed by five, 10 minutes later and then that's okay. Yeah. Because at that moment, they just want you. Like, yes. Yeah. And it's that secure, that's what creates that secure bond for them to be healthy adults mm. later on, right? So, yeah. Mm. Did yeah. You, it's cute when they do that. I know. I know. It's like the best. Yeah. Did, did you apply at the, the Craft Revival Spring stuff then? I did. I did. Yes, oh, right I did. Um, yeah. I love craft revival. Like it'll always hold a special place in my heart because that's what made me go from, I don't want to be here to I'm, I'm here. Like this is yeah. starting to feel like home mm-hmm. kind of thing. Right. And I liked it even more at Christmas because it was virtual. So I was able to, shop at the same time and i wasn't feeling like i was missing out on uh, anything right yes yeah i was nice i would that was such an awesome an awesome bonus of it you know as much as uh, as much as this the whole situation wasn't ideal it was nice you know that was like was icing on the cake mm. um i i miss in person i i miss it in person as well though like as much yeah. as Crowds kind of freak me out. I uh, definitely miss the mm-hmm. interacting with people, like big time. Yeah, about that. Yeah. You 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 enjoy now. Does that mean you enjoy the like engagement with people? Right? You do that. You obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Because you know you 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 not to put you on the spot, but you know no. you you. you yeah. Some people have it easier, engage with other people, and some people don't, right? And I, Oh, I have a hard time. I definitely have a hard time with that. Really? But How? I cannot tell, you know? I don't know. Mm. I, I'm i really shy. Like, if I was at home, like, like I am at home, but, mm. you know, I'm usually a shy person. Um, like, even in a, a crowd of people where you are mingling, you know, it, it's, Oh, I have such a hard time with that. Really, really have a hard time with that. But I feel like at like craft revival, you have your booth and people come to you. I don't have to uh, go to people. Okay. So that I think is my, if people want to talk to me, they're going to talk to me. I'm not forcing myself on anybody else. Mm. So that that's probably where I have the where that that difference is made. But uh, and with the name, I, I I love people watching. I love watching people. And then when you have like when I have my booth and my yeah. table, whatever, there's a big happy hooker right in the front, right? Oh yeah. So I'm sitting there and I, you could tell when somebody sees it from the back of the room and they're walking in and you're, you can see it. And they're like, <laughs> and then they'll be like, mm. and then I'm thinking, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I got you. Right. And then I have a little, like I get a little pleasure out of seeing people. 
they get flushed, they get red in the face, like, oh my gosh. Mm. And mm. it's fun. Like to me, I'm sitting there going, like, but then like the last craft revival we got to do, there was um, people that would come in in the morning and then a couple hours later, they would come back and they'd say, I have a joke for you on my phone. Can I show you this meme? And they would come up and share these jokes and these, these hooker jokes. And, mm. you know, like, that's awesome. Like, that's, that's the kind of stuff you don't really get okay. over the phone. Yes. You know, and it's hard to sometimes convey, you know, a sense of humor or mm-hmm. it's so easy to misread a text. It's so easy to misread an email, a caption, yes, a caption, too. an email, anything, right? Like it's really, really hard. So when you're like, when I post something that I made, it's hard to not come off as snobby or a know-it-all or yeah. whatever other word I've been called. Um, and it's like really not like that. Mm. You know, like if we were in a booth right now, you would totally see I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. But that's the downside of the times that we're living in, right? So it's one of those things I'm definitely looking forward to on the other side, I guess we'll call it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's a good explanation. Yeah. Now, you you brought up the name. I, I wanted to talk about that, too. I didn't know when it was a good time, but I think the time is now. <laughs> now is the time, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Happy hooker. Is that yeah. is that is, I, is that hundred percent your own idea? No, um, when I was looking for a name, like when I started this whole crochet um, business, it was like completely on a whim. Like I didn't plan okay i'm gonna have a business and i'm gonna look for a name it was like one nap afternoon while the baby was napping i was like i'm doing this mm-hmm. pull the plug let's do it now okay and then i was just looking for a name and i was just it's always like so and so's knits so and so's whatever and i just kind of wanted something to yeah. stand out from the crowd i as much as I like to be shy and blend in, mm-hmm. I'm not really somebody who does that just by nature. So, and I do have a kind of a, a good sense of humor. Like I don't, you know, I, 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 yeah. I like fun jokes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I have a sense of humor mm. and I wanted something to reflect that. But I also knew that I would be doing markets And that crowds made me super anxious. Okay. And I was thinking, I need a good icebreaker. I need something memorable. Mm. I need something catchy and funny. And, you know, and then, so I just, here we go to Google. And I just went through a whole bunch of different things. And I saw Happy Hooker and I was, and it made me giggle. And I'm like, well, if it's going to make me giggle, it'll Mm. make somebody else giggle. Okay. And I wasn't going to use it because somebody else had it. Like, and I was like, oh, but I'm like, well, everybody's name is so-and-so's whatever, you know, like, so then I tried to like search if there was an Ashley, the the happy hooker. And they didn't, that wasn't taken. And Ashley, the happy hooker.com was still available. And I was like, (laughs) and priceless. Yeah. Yeah, and at the time, I was married to somebody who was very involved in the church. Mm. And I, I kind of had to, like, have a smile on it and have a different take on it. Yes. And, you know, like, life is not meant to be lived so seriously. Like, yeah. life is serious enough. We need to laugh. and Yeah. Yeah, and know how fun it is to make people say hooker that much? <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. Mm. 
And there's, that's what I mean. And people will come up and they'll so, smile. And when you, yeah. you do a market, everybody's smiling and, you know, like yeah. it's happy. What, what's your email address then for the shop? Ashley at AshleyTheHappyHooker.com. That's pretty good. So it's, it's still, it's, I mean, <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I, I won't, I won't lie. I had a really, I had a name that was much worse than that. And I was told, okay, Ashley, you need to tone that down. Because <laughs> I was going to put the naughty hooker. Mm. Because crochet is all knots. But I was like, okay. Uh, that's a good one, though. Like the with knots. Yeah. Right? The naughty hooker. A naughty hooker. Yeah. But it was like one of those. Mm. Just too tone much. Tone it down. Like yeah. just a little too far. Yeah. Yeah, you oh. you could like you could make that your shop's name, and then you would just work there. So you know, yeah, yeah. I'd be like head hooker, you know. <laughs> oh boy! I but like it. even like when I used to do like YouTube videos and stuff, because I would do the YouTube videos that would accompany my classes. So if I taught a class and I wasn't there to help them, like two days later on how to do something, because the classes would be broken down in two mm. with a week in between. So they would be able to learn how to start and make it. And then the second class would be how to finish it off kind yes. of thing. Yes. So you can't learn to finish it without. So I started making the YouTube videos that were accompanying my class. Mm -hmm. So that way there, they can go home and have that. So even there, I'd be like, hey, hookers, you know, like, mm -hmm. how often do you get to call people hooker? <laughs> like, yes. And then not be offended by it, right? So. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's actually, it's just a misconception. It's like, it's a, it's an official term in your trade. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 It's just yeah. our minds playing games. <laughs> yeah. It's good branding. That's for sure. You know, yeah. and good identity. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> and I, th I, I think it's also it's good that you know you, uh, you utilize it in a good way where you know it it helps people to talk about it. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. It's if at the end of the day, I just want to make make people smile, make people happier. You know, any way I can. You know, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, I think we. I'm good. Are you, are We're you good. good? Are you good? I. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> right on. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I truly enjoyed this today. You know, I'm, I'm. I did too. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. I um. I feel like when when this is the pandemic is all done, you gotta come by the studio, you know, and we do maybe we should do another episode. For sure. I would love to do that. Yeah. That'd be my pleasure. And then yeah. we can maybe, you know, we you bring something where I can actually see your work in person. Like Yeah, for sure. Because like I'm fascinated by the idea that the sweater you're wearing, you made this yourself. That this is just one of like it's the greatest. And it's it's long. It goes down to the knee. Mm. Like it's it's a nice long piece. And yeah, it's perfect. Sometimes you need to feel it too, right? Like yes. Like how often do you feel silk or you know? There's so many different fibers. Like there are fibers that are made from eucalyptus plants that are mm. you know. So there's so many different types of eco-friendly sustainable yarns that unless you feel it to see exactly how soft it is yeah you wouldn't know no way no. I wouldn't know, but mm. that would be i would definitely that would be my pleasure to do that okay yeah and then we i and all the audience will uh wait patiently till a uh, washington dc hits you up yeah. Yeah. that'll be so cool i yeah. can't wait to share like i cried <laughs> when I cried when I saw that picture, like so good. Wow, wow, yeah. I love it. You're putting Thunder Bay on the on the map. I hope so. Yeah. I hope for the right reasons. Sure, yeah. Let's let's not talk it small. It's big. 
Yeah. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's nice to be here with that. Okay, Ashley, I wish you a wonderful night. I wish you the very best. And thank you so much again for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Stay warm. I will. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. What?